We did the best we could with what we knew at the time. No, you did not. You knew better than that. You knew that was not a risk to those children. You knew that that disease was not life-threatening to those healthy children, and you shut it down and sent them home and left them there for two years. Some of them locked up with their abusers, the rest of them dealing with anxiety, depression, loneliness, and suicide. You did it because you could, and you had no plan to reopen the schools, and that's where government's getting in the way of being healthy. That's where families are getting broken apart, and that pisses me off. And it should. Why do you think they did it? What do you think the motivation behind keeping schools closed for that long was? Because it wasn't everywhere. It wasn't here. But it was in California. Oh, my God. My kids went back to school pretty quick. And it was also one of the reasons why I wanted to be here. They had a completely different attitude about what you couldn't, couldn't do during COVID. But why would they ever want schools to be shut for two years? Like, what's the motivation behind it? Well... And it wasn't just schools. I mean, they wiped out thousands of family businesses yeah. that had been in business 40, 50, 60, 70 years, most of which never came back. They right. o- they operated on such a small margin. Mm-hmm. They're wiped out forever. Yeah. Um, so many, at one point in time, it was 70% of Los Angeles restaurants. Yeah. And, and then they spent $5.5 trillion counting stimulus checks, unemployment, extended unemployment benefits, 4.4 trillion of which went into savings and checkings account, which means they didn't need it. And then when they did spend it, they they spent some of it on rent and groceries, the first 1.1 trillion dollars of it, the rest of it went into savings and checking. So they weren't living on it. They were saving it, holding on to it, right? So it wasn't necessarily needed. Um, again, I I think at the time, if you're a hammer, you got a new hammer, everything looks like a nail. They had this power. And here's the problem. Our lives are controlled too much by people that weren't elected. These were bureaucrats that got appointed into positions. So who are they accountable to? We didn't elect the head of this agency or the head of that agency. They just got put in that position. And so they shut things down and changed this economy forever. And those kids that went through that, they lost, what, a year of learning? Some of it's been made back, but they were behind to begin with. And what are the long-term consequences of that? Well, the pediatric epidemiologists suggest that millions of years of life have been lost. And I'll tell you why. Because they don't close the achievement gap educationally, which means they don't do as well in school, so they don't get as good a jobs, and the more blue-collar jobs are riskier you know, because they're working with their hands, they're working in places where they're more inclined to get injured uh, or killed on the job. They have poorer benefits in lesser jobs, so diseases get diagnosed more slowly, um, and so they get treated uh, later in the disease progression, which means that there's a higher mortality rate. Um, And... So that shaves more years, years off, their off life. The, And if you've got somewhere between 50 and 55 million kids in the public school system, um, and however many of them were affected by this, uh, do the math. It doesn't take shaving very many years off at the end of the life to, I've seen estimates anywhere from 5.5 million to uh, 10 million years of lives lost uh, uh, by the fact that they won't have the achievement that they might have had otherwise. Um, So, and there are some efforts being made to close the gap, but not enough, and the gaps haven't been closed. Uh, Right now, 30% of fifth graders and about 30% of eighth graders can't read at the most basic level. 19% of of high school graduates can't read at the most basic level. Uh, But yet they get progressed on 
uh, because they get paid if they go to the next grade level. We got issues. Yeah. It's a (laughs) great title for a book. It really is. It's uh, very accurate. And I'm glad you're out there. I'm glad you're out there saying these things as a respected voice, as a guy that people want to listen to when you recognize the the actual problems and not what everybody's just sort of parroting. Somebody needs to say this. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got... People are picking the wrong battles. Yeah. They're picking the wrong battles. They're telling us what we can and can't say. Um, you know, we can't say brown bag lunch anymore. You're not supposed to say that. Um, that's somehow bad news. You can't, I, I read the other day, you can't say hip, hip, hooray anymore. Huh? That offends people with hip injuries. No, I come on. you not. Come on. I, Jamie, pull that up. I hip, hip, hooray. Yeah, I kid you not. Um, you, you can't say, now you, you don't, uh, some places don't say felons anymore. They say justice involved person. <laughs> so you weren't raped. You were engaged with a justice involved person, not a rapist, a How justice involved person. My favorite is no more pedophiles. It's minor attracted persons. Yeah. Are you? That's insane. That's I've seen university professors teach that to their classes about how the the most unrepresented or minor attracted persons. Now, that's what I mean when I say we're picking the wrong battles here. But do you think that that when I see stuff like that, I'm like I go back to the Yuri Bezmenov interview, the guy who was the former KGB guy that said that the Soviet Union had infected our schools with Marxism and we're ruining. Yeah. I mean, it really if you watch that speech, everything that he said came to be true. It's all what we're dealing with right now. It's the, literally the exact same thing that he was describing in the 1980s. Yeah. Well, you know, we've we've gotten a copy of a document from the 60s from the Soviet Union about how to subvert the American society, and Bezmenov says, "Yeah, it's already been done. We're doing it to ourselves." Yeah, and it's true. And um, how do you think we pull out of this? I don't have a lot of faith. I'm very concerned. I'm very concerned that it's going, it's progressing in a direction that even if people push back, the the direction is, it's go, moving so fast with so much momentum and people are so insane. Well, I'm the, I'm the other way. I'm, I'm the incurable optimist. <laughs> I, mean, I, I really am. I, I think that you have to get people that, typically wouldn't speak out.